<laughs> so at the beginning of the summer, I bought this life jacket. Now this life jacket obviously wasn't for me, it was for one of my kids. Um, but like any, uh, any responsible parent, I bought a life jacket, looked at the label, picked the appropriate size, threw it on my kid and tossed him in the lake. But today I'm gonna show you the design principles and engineering that actually goes into one of these. Features you should look for when buying a life jacket. And then we're headed to China to see how they're actually made. Now, Norwegian sailors developed the first life jacket and the first cork life jacket was actually patented in 1765 by a guy named Dr. John Wilkinson. A life jacket is essentially a piece of equipment designed to keep somebody out of the water. But how does that actually work? So let's talk uh, some physics of behind the life jacket and we need to consult a guy named Archimedes. So the Archimedes principle states that the buoyant force exerted on an object that is submerged partially or completely in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by the object. What does that actually mean? So to demonstrate Archimedes principle, we have this bowl full of water here and it's all the way up to the top. So when we start pushing down on this, it will start pushing water out of the bowl and we've got a scale here so we can tear that out now I'm gonna push on this and the water is gonna push back with its buoyant force and the more I push down the more water comes out and the harder it is for me to push down Stop there a pound and a half of water and that is the pound and a half of buoyant force that I felt when I pushed down that empty bowl, which represented us in a life jacket. So now that we understand Archimedes' principle, let's take a look at this life jacket. So this life jacket is filled with a whole bunch of foam. And now foam doesn't really weigh a whole lot, but it, because of its volume to weight ratio, it displaces a lot of water. That means that the buoyant force acting on this life jacket or any life jacket is actually quite a bit. In fact, depending on the size and style and level that it's approved for, it can be upwards of 10 times the amount that it weighs. So the average person weighs about seven to 12 pounds in water. And that means a life jacket doesn't really need to support the full weight of a person. They just need to prop up that seven to 12 pounds. And if you look at the life jacket label, this is a level 70 life jacket and which means it provides 70 newtons worth of buoyant force or approximately 15.7 pounds so now uh, let's look at the label of the life jacket all right so there's a couple different labels here there is the uh, user weight here and there's also a label that includes some pertinent information here so this is, uh, includes the manufacturer, who it's made by. Um, it has a Coast Guard approval number on it, basically approved to save your life <laughs> if it's used in accordance with the label and the instructions. So now that we understand the principles behind life jackets, such as Archimedes principle, buoyant force, and the design considerations that are uh, involved in actually making one of these, well, now it's time to go see how these are made. So let's head to China. One eternity later. Welcome to Guangzhou City, China. Guangzhou. Guang, Guangzhou. Guangzhou. <laughs> Guangzhou City, China. With a population of over 14.9 million people, this makes it the third largest city in China. And today we're going to visit Kent Water Sports to see how life jackets are made. Now, Kent Water Sports invited me over, and they are actually the manufacturer for over 20 brands like. Connolly, Liquid Force, Hyperlite, O'Brien's, just to name a few. So let's go check it out. It all starts with the fabric. The fabric is cut two different ways. This digital cutter is the fastest way panels are cut. The panels are uploaded and the computer arranges the panels for maximum yield. All the panels for an entire jacket are cut out in one single section. This machine is slicing through 50 sheets of fabric like butter. Fabric can also be cut by hand using these razor sharp cutters that can handle up to six inches of fabric at a time. Here is about 150 layers being cut by hand with a paper pad. The fabric is then labeled, stacked, and stored for later use. 
Next, the silk screens are either made or pulled from a rack of hundreds of screens for the specific life jacket to be labeled. Each individual panel is labeled and sent through a dryer. Every labeled panel is inspected by a person for accuracy and clarity. Panels requiring a design are laid out and silk screened while the dryer follows them along. Now it's time to sew. All patterns are sewn in an assembly line style fashion. Each person has a specific panel they are responsible for sewing together. And these people are lightning fast. These 300 people crank out over 3 million life jackets a year. After the body is sewn, it's stuffed with foam, closed up, cleaned, and trimmed. At random, a life jacket is also pulled from the lot and checked by the QA manager. It's verified against the approved plans, and then, boom, you have a life jacket. Life jackets are also randomly tested for strength and quality. Foam is submerged for over 24 hours to ensure proper buoyancy. Additionally, life jackets and buckles are also tested for seam strength and strap holding power. The typical made in China stereotype gets a bad rap, but I was thoroughly impressed with the quality products Kent was producing. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about life jackets today. The uh, physics behind floating objects. Actually, our little trip to China to see how these uh, engineering marvels, <laughs> not really engineering marvels, they're just piece thing that keeps you alive at sea, I don't know. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.